Why would China release millions of fish, crayfish, salmon, and even saltwater species into one of the driest, harshest deserts on Earth? It sounds like a catastrophe in the making. But this wasn't a blunder, it was a carefully planned strategy. Just a year later, the outcome has astonished scientists, disrupted agricultural norms, and sparked a serious question, and what else have we underestimated? It's harvest season, but not for traditional crops like pumpkins, corn, or apples. This time, the harvest is seafood, grown on land. In the remote stretches of northwest China, where most would expect only sun-scorched sand, a seemingly impossible vision is coming to life. Xinjiang, a region long known for its unforgiving deserts and extreme conditions, is undergoing a transformation that few thought achievable. With its dry climate, towering mountain ranges, and sweeping plains, Xinjiang seemed like the last place suited for a large-scale aquaculture project. Farming aquatic species in this landlocked, desert terrain once sounded absurd. The region experiences intense seasonal extremes, searing summers and freezing winters, with scarce rainfall and no coastline. On top of that, its saline alkali soils posed major challenges for aquatic agriculture. Unsurprisingly, when the idea was first proposed, experts across the globe dismissed it as wildly impractical. Despite the skepticism, China moved forward in 2023. Rather than stick to the traditional model of fish farming near coastal areas, the Chinese government launched an ambitious project, introducing millions of fish into this unlikely setting. This wasn't a limited experiment or academic study, it was full-scale commercial farming. There were no controlled laboratory environments, just land, water, and time. The concept was met with criticism, but officials pressed on, committed to bringing aquatic farming to the desert. Xinjiang's future was now tied to a bold vision that had the potential to reshape agriculture, not only in China but around the world. One year later, this once ridiculed initiative is proving the doubters wrong. It's not just an inspirational idea and a more, it's a breakthrough that is transforming how we think about farming fish on land. Xinjiang presents a curious contradiction. At first glance, its vast deserts like the Taklamakan give the impression of lifeless, arid terrain. It hardly seems like the place where fish would thrive. Yet hidden beneath this harsh surface lies an unexpected asset, a water. The region is dotted with over 3 million hectares of lakes, rivers, ponds, and reservoirs, providing a glimmer of hope for aquaculture in a place once deemed unfit for it. The most valuable resource in Xinjiang is the glacial meltwater that flows from the Tian Shan Mountains. This water is cold, clean, and rich in oxygen, perfect conditions for aquatic life. For generations, this year-round water source was largely ignored in agricultural planning. But as demand for inland fish farms increased, the potential of these glacial-fed reservoirs came into view. These untouched water bodies were no longer just passive features of the landscape. They became the heart of a movement. For the first time, Xinjiang's remote waters were being used not just for crop irrigation but to support a new kind of farming, one centered on fish. As the meltwater filled the reservoirs, it laid the groundwork for a thriving industry. No longer just a necessity for survival, water became the fuel for an aquaculture revolution. Month by month, the fish flourished. The project proved not only feasible but promising. Slowly, Xinjiang began to emerge as an unexpected leader in high-end seafood production. What was once viewed as impossible is now becoming reality, one reservoir, one fish, and one drop of meltwater at a time. The dream of turning Xinjiang into an aquaculture hub isn't a fantasy anymore. It's a growing success story with the potential to shape the future of food sustainability for years to come. In the summer of 2023, planes took off from coastal provinces like Zhejiang and Hainan, carrying an unusual cargo, aquatic species meant for the desert. These planes were loaded with crayfish, pearl gentian groupers, crab fry, and cold water salmon hatchlings, all destined for a dry, landlocked area associated more with dust storms than marine life. But this wasn't a typical shipment. It marked the start of a groundbreaking project, one meant to challenge traditional ideas about where and how we can farm. This was a mission to rewrite the rules of agriculture in one of the harshest climates on earth. The scale of the operation was massive. 
30,000 crab seedlings were flown from San Men County to a farming cooperative in Aral City, a place previously thought inhospitable to life, let alone seafood. 2,000 groupers arrived from Hainan, introduced into saline alkali waters completely different from the oceans they came from. The logistics were complex, involving careful coordination across thousands of kilometers. But this wasn't just about moving species. It was about creating entire ecosystems and redefining livelihoods. It was a bold statement, an open challenge to the assumption that deserts cannot support aquatic farming. For Xinjiang, this wasn't simply a farming project. It was a declaration of possibility. In a place known for extreme heat and limited water, fish farming seemed absurd. And yet, that's exactly what was happening. The new ecosystems were being engineered to transform agriculture in a region shaped by scarcity and harsh conditions. One key site in this revolution was Nilik County in the Ili Kazakh Autonomous Prefecture. There, reservoirs fed by glacial melt were an ideal match for salmon, imported from the cool waters of northern Europe. With natural temperatures around 12 degrees Celsius year-round, these waters provided perfect conditions for cold water species. What had once been written off as a barren wasteland was now being reimagined as a high-tech aquaculture zone. Floating cages, each housing salmon at different stages of development, were carefully arranged across the reservoirs. These cages weren't just holding fish, they were holding the future of sustainable farming in a region that had defied all expectations. The vast body of water offered an ideal setting for fish to flourish. Above it, the sun burned intensely, sending scorching rays across the landscape. Yet beneath the surface, the fish remained cool and sheltered. Automated systems provided the salmon with precisely measured nutrients, supporting their health and consistent growth year-round. From their early stages as hatchlings, the salmon entered a three-year growth cycle within this surprisingly accommodating environment. What was once dismissed as a lifeless, arid desert had evolved into a thriving center of aquatic life. The fish adapted quickly, growing impressively in their artificial habitat, while the surrounding ecosystem gradually adjusted to the unexpected presence of aquatic life. These salmon weren't merely surviving, they were flourishing, paving the way for a groundbreaking shift in desert farming. In Xinjiang, the term desert farming was redefined. The transformation was remarkable, demonstrating that with innovation, persistence, and suitable conditions, even the most inhospitable lands could be converted into productive agricultural zones. As the salmon swam peacefully in the glacial-fed waters, the world began to take notice. Desert farming had moved beyond theory, it had become a tangible success. In Xinjiang, a region once considered barren and unsuitable for agriculture, aquaculture on saline alkali soil became a reality. Tumshuk City, once plagued by harsh saline soil where no crops could grow, is now home to vibrant fish ponds. This is a true transformation, where desert meets sea, showcasing extraordinary human ingenuity. Here, farmers have reimagined what it means to cultivate life in one of the harshest environments. The process begins inside greenhouse nurseries where saltwater fish fry are raised through the winter in precisely controlled conditions. These young fish grow in specially designed tanks where salinity and temperature are carefully regulated. Once ready, they are transferred outdoors to saline ponds. Though located in the desert, these ponds are enhanced with trace minerals and probiotics, creating an artificial seawater system capable of supporting marine species. This intricate but efficient setup replicates the sea's nutrient-rich conditions without being near the ocean. It represents a bold departure from traditional aquaculture methods. Instead of relying on coastal access, Xinjiang has developed its own marine ecosystem, producing fish at scale in a land long considered barren. What was once seen as a curse, selenium alkali soil, has become a valuable asset in modern precision farming. This transformation opens the door for other desert regions to unlock their hidden agricultural potential. The idea that only coastal or temperate regions can sustain fish farming has been challenged. Xinjiang's aquaculture innovations have shown that with technology, dedication, and creativity, nature's limitations can be overcome. Fish farming's future no longer depends on the ocean, it's built on machines, data, and high productivity. But innovation doesn't end with artificial seawater. 
It's also embedded in the core of Xinjiang's aquaculture systems. Fish farms here are no longer manual, labor-intensive operations. Instead, they function as advanced facilities, driven by smart algorithms and automated processes. Equipped with feeders, environmental sensors, and climate control, these farms are continuously monitored to ensure optimal water quality, salinity, and temperature. Environmental data is processed in real time, enabling precise adjustments. Even iceboxes storing freshly harvested fish use digital systems to maintain temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius, preserving freshness. Within just 24 hours, the fish are packed, processed, and ready for shipment, maintaining high quality to meet global standards. This level of automation allows exceptional efficiency. One processing plant in the desert handles up to 50 tons of salmon daily. Each fish is harvested with care, and the operation runs non-stop to supply a steady stream of fresh seafood. The use of sensors and automation reduces human error, maximizing both output and quality. What distinguishes Xinjiang from traditional coastal fisheries is its ability to scale sustainably, without facing the environmental threats that challenge ocean-based farms, such as rising sea temperatures and overfishing. In contrast, Xinjiang's inland farms are designed for sustainability from the start, minimizing ecological impact while enhancing productivity. This isn't just fish farming, it's precision aquaculture where cutting-edge technology and nature work in harmony to achieve both environmental and economic goals. For Xinjiang, this revolution is only beginning. These farms are expanding the limits of what agriculture and aquaculture can achieve. The desert, once seen as a hostile barrier to farming, now stands as a symbol of innovation. It shows that with the right tools, vision, and perseverance, even the most unlikely places can flourish. The Gudaku Aquaculture Cooperative, located at the edge of the Tarkan Desert, is a striking example of resilience, innovation, and transformation. Its founder, Ma Chunhua, recalls the uncertain beginnings of 2017, when only a few members believed in the idea of farming in such a harsh region. There was no clear path, and skepticism was high. Yet Ma, driven by her vision and determination, saw promise where others saw only dust. Through experimentation, adaptation, and persistence, Ma developed a groundbreaking dual farming system. Crayfish, well suited to aquatic environments, were raised alongside water caltrop, a highly nutritious aquatic plant known for its resilience. This hybrid model became a success story. The result was a premium crayfish product that quickly gained market traction. Not only did the crayfish thrive, but the cooperative's unique methods added value and recognition to their offerings. Today, the cooperative yields an impressive 150 kilograms of crayfish per mu, far surpassing traditional farming outputs. What began as a bold experiment has grown into a model of success in one of the world's most unforgiving landscapes. The expansive waters created an ideal habitat where fish could thrive. Above the surface, the sun beat down relentlessly, casting scorching rays across the land, but below, the fish remained cool and protected. Automated systems precisely dispense nutrients to the salmon, supporting their health and growth year-round. These salmon, once tiny hatchlings, embarked on a three-year growth journey in what turned out to be a remarkably nurturing environment. What had once been seen as a barren, lifeless desert was now a thriving center of aquatic activity. The fish adapted impressively well to their engineered surroundings, while the broader ecosystem gradually began to accommodate this new aquatic presence. These salmon weren't just surviving, they were flourishing, signaling the dawn of a new era in desert farming. In Xinjiang, the concept of desert farming had been completely redefined. This transformation was extraordinary, proving that with innovation, perseverance, and the right conditions, even the harshest environments could be converted into fertile grounds for agriculture. As the salmon swam in glacial-fed waters, the world started to pay attention. Desert farming had become more than just a concept, it was now a thriving reality. Aquaculture had found its place on saline alkali soil. In the heart of Xinjiang, a region once declared unfit for farming, the impossible had become possible. Tumshuk City, infamous for its highly saline soil where nothing could grow, had been transformed into a thriving center for fish farming. 
this remarkable turnaround merged the desert with the sea in a stunning display of human ingenuity. Local farmers revolutionized cultivation by raising saltwater fish in greenhouse nurseries during winter. These fish were bred in controlled tanks with carefully balanced salinity and temperature, and once ready, were moved to saline ponds outdoors. These ponds, situated in the middle of the desert, were designed to mimic oceanic conditions with added trace elements and probiotics to create a man-made seawater environment capable of sustaining marine life. This carefully crafted system effectively replicated nutrient-rich ocean waters without needing to be near a coast. It marked a major shift from traditional aquaculture, with Xinjiang creating its own marine ecosystem in an otherwise hostile landscape. The same soil once seen as a curse now became a valuable asset in precision farming. The broader impact was enormous, demonstrating that desert regions everywhere could unlock new agricultural potential. Xinjiang's aquaculture achievements made it clear that thriving fish farms didn't have to be limited to coastal or temperate areas. With the right blend of technology, dedication, and creativity, nature's boundaries could be overcome. Fish farming was no longer dependent on oceans, it had evolved into a machine-driven, metrics-based operation delivering massive yields. The innovation reached deep into the core of Xinjiang's aquaculture efforts. These weren't old-style, labor-heavy farms. They were state-of-the-art facilities managed by smart technology and precision processes. Each fish farm operated like a high-tech plant, outfitted with automated feeders, environmental sensors, and climate-controlled systems. Every tank and pond was under constant observation to ensure optimal water quality, salinity, and temperature. All data fed into a central system, where conditions could be adjusted instantly. Even the iceboxes storing freshly harvested fish were managed digitally to maintain temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius, preserving freshness. The fish were then packed in ice, processed, and ready for distribution within 24 hours. These systems allowed for incredible efficiency, one facility alone could process up to 50 tons of salmon daily, running around the clock. Automation reduced errors and boosted both output and quality. What made Xinjiang stand out from coastal fish farms was its ability to scale operations without facing the environmental problems plaguing traditional fisheries, such as rising sea temperatures and overfishing. Built for sustainability, these desert farms minimized their environmental impact while maximizing productivity. This wasn't ordinary fish farming, it was precision aquaculture, where advanced technology and nature worked in harmony to deliver both ecological and economic sustainability. And this was just the beginning for Xinjiang. These pioneering farms were redefining what agriculture and aquaculture could look like, showing the world that innovation could turn even deserts into productive lands. Another example of this transformation is the Gudaku Aquaculture Cooperative near the edge of the Tarkan Desert. This cooperative tells a compelling story of resilience and innovation. Its founder, Ma Chunhua, recalls how the idea of farming in such an arid environment was met with skepticism in 2017. With only a few members, no clear model, and lots of uncertainty, the journey was anything but easy. Yet, Ma remained driven by vision and determination, seeing opportunity where others saw only dust. Her efforts resulted in a groundbreaking dual farming system, combining crayfish, a species suited to aquatic life, with water caltrop, an adaptable aquatic plant rich in nutrients. This hybrid method proved highly effective, producing high-quality crayfish that quickly gained popularity. The unique cultivation technique gave the cooperative's products an edge in the market. Today, the cooperative produces around 150 kilograms of crayfish per moo, far exceeding traditional yields. This success showcases how even the harshest landscapes can be transformed with creativity, collaboration, and determination.